This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters. Good morning, all. Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am Ved Nokai, your friend, your your friend and your brother and your pastor, the pastor of the Aruka Worship Centre. I welcome you to our service this morning. In this service this morning, we're going to have some songs. We're going to have the reading of the word. I'm going to have the sharing of the word, and we'll close off with prayer. Thank you for joining us so early in the morning, and please join as we open in prayer and move straight into worship. Father, we give you thanks this morning for your wonderful love toward us. We declare this morning that this is the day that you have made, and we are rejoicing in it, O oh God. We are glad in it. Oh God, we recognize this morning that there is no other God but beside you. And that we have not only a duty and an an obligation to serve you and to worship you, but oh God, we want to do this this morning. We love you, Lord. And Father, we invite your divine presence. You know all that we have planned to do, oh God, to bring glory to your name, to encourage your church and all others that are joining in, to encourage and to challenge them, Father. Lord, we bless your name and I commit it in your hands. Holy Spirit, I ask you to take over in Jesus' powerful and precious name. Amen. Well, praise God. We're going to go straight into our worship and Sister Shamila. And right after that, my wife is going to come and lead us in our reading of the scripture. God bless you. Precious. Hallelujah. Good morning, and I greet you in the very powerful name of our Lord and our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah, For thus says the Lord, who created the heavens, I am the Lord, and there is no other. Turn to me and be saved, all the ends of the earth, for I am God, and there is no other. This morning, God, we recognize that you are God, and you are God alone, and there is none else beside you. You are Alpha, you are Omega, you are beginning, you are ending, you are he who was and who is and who is to come. There is none that's like you to the Lord our God. We bless you, we praise you, we give glory and adoration unto your name. Bless the Lord of my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We bless your holy name this morning. You're not a God created by human hands, for you are God alone. We declare what you have spoken this morning. Any 
Lord, are alongside you as you have me. Thank you, Lord, as we trust you, you will not be ashamed. Thank you that you are true to your word. Thank you that you are true to your word. We honor your word. We honor your word and we come in faith. For without faith, it is impossible to please you. So we come in faith in your word. We believe in you this morning. We believe in you that you are God and you are God alone. And we acknowledge that there is none else beside you.
Let's not let him down this morning. Hallelujah. All right. After three, we read together. Two, three. Then said some of them of Jerusalem, Is not this he whom they seek to kill? But lo, he speaketh boldly, and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? Howbeit we know this man whence he is, but when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, You both know me, and you know whence I am, and I am not come of myself, but he that sent me is true, whom you know not. But I know him, for I am from him, and he has sent me. Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him, because his hour was not yet come. And many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than those than these which this man hath done? The Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him. And the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. Then said Jesus unto him, Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. You shall seek me, and shall not find me. And where I am, thither you cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go? that we shall not find him? Will he go on to the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? What manner of saying is this that he said? He shall seek me and shall not find me. And where I am, thither he cannot come. In the that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, 
Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never speak, never man speak like. Then answered them the Pharisees, Are you also deceived? Have any of the rulers or of the Pharisees believed on him? But the people knew it not, the law accursed. Nicodemus saith unto them, He that came to Jesus by night being one of them, doth our law judge any man before it hear him, and know what he doeth? They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for up ariseth no prophet. And every man went unto his own house. We thank God for the reading of his word this morning, and I trust, brethren, that you will continue to read as the week progresses. I know that we cannot congregate anymore. I mean, there are nine of us here today. This ends today. We have to obey the instructions of the government, so we will not be meeting like this again. But I want you to continue reading and continue to be what Sunday of the month? Yes? And we would usually celebrate the birthdays and anniversary of the brethren. And today, to all of you that celebrated your birthday in the month of March and have yet two more days, I believe, to go, a very happy birthday to all of you. And may God's choicest blessings be upon your life. And to those of you celebrating anniversaries, may your love for each other continue. God bless you, and I'm handing over the service to our bishop. Thank you very much, my dear. Thank you, folks, for staying, for staying with us. I know we may have had a slight break just now. Uh, it's beyond our control. I encourage you, brethren, though, to uh, join us on the Zoom. And um, it will, of course, go uninterrupted. Amen. You'll be able to see us uninterrupted. Thank you for staying with us. So this morning, I have a word that I'd like to share with you. And I'm reading from two. In the book of Peter, 1 Peter chapter 4, 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter 4 verse 7 says, But in the end... Or rather, but the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8 tells us, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Father, I have prayed concerning this service this morning. I have prayed concerning, Lord, the delivery of the word. And now is the time to do so. I ask that you will send your anointing this moment that will make the teaching and the preaching easy that will also remove all distractions and disturbances and cause this world to go forth with might with power and it will have free course in the name of the living Christ Jesus Amen and Amen so, does it make sense to pray? What is the effectiveness or the efficacy of prayer during this global crisis? Prayer, I to quote Ravi Zacharias. He said that prayer is to start a communion with God. It is the starting of 
a talk with God, a communion with him and he with us. It is not bringing God to our every beck and call, but rather it is to align ourselves, amen, with what he wants. Yes, yes. Let me repeat that. It is not to bring God, amen, to our every beck and call and to get him to align with our plans and our purposes and our ideas. But quite on the contrary, it is a process in which we get our hearts conditioned to receive what is his will and we come into alignment and into agreement with what he has in plan for us, for kinfolk, for the church and for the world. Amen. 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 So instead of being Amen. A control freak of God. It's trying to control. You see, God is not in heaven. Amen. Waiting on us to give him instruction what to do. Neither does he have to call any one of us on a special line, be it mobile or otherwise. Or secret way of, communi of, of communication. And ask the question, may I do thus and thus? No way. He's God. He's sovereign. And he does whatever he wills. So what am I saying? I'm saying that instead of being a control of God, then prayer is is instead a surrender to the will of God and the peace that comes from that process. Amen. 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 Addition, additionally to that, prayer serves to shape the one who is praying. Yeah. I repeat, prayer serves to shape the one who is praying. Therefore, prayer ought to make us better persons. Prayer ought to make us better children, better pastors, better believers, better citizens, better friends. Hallelujah. Amen. This is what prayer, amen, is all about. So I'm saying to you this morning, amen, the question, the question, should we pray in times of crisis? I'm saying yes, but not only in times of crisis, but during this time of crisis, may we use prayer, hallelujah, to help us. Help us to do what? Help us to do two things. One, to surrender our hearts to God and to come into alignment with His will. Amen. One, to, come, to surrender our hearts to God and to come into alignment with His will. And secondly, amen, may we use prayer crisis. Amen. To become better citizens. To become better people in the community. Amen. To help to understand those amen that are weak and poor and vulnerable. Amen. And who are rejects in the society. Hallelujah. And who are going through a rough and rugged time. Be it economically, socially, emotionally or otherwise. Hallelujah to God Almighty. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. 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 There's a second part of this message. How should we behave in a time like this? During a time like this, many measures have been taken both here and globally. And they have been taken not to punish the citizenry but rather to help to mitigate the impact 
vector of the virus. Yeah. So I want to urge believers, my own brothers and sisters of the Aroka Worship Center, and by extension, brothers and sisters of the wider body of Christ. I want to urge you this morning to combine your faith with your faith and trust in God. Combine that with wisdom and pure common sense and logic. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Combine it. Mix your faith. Mix your faith with your words. Now trust in God doesn't mean be careless. Trust in God doesn't mean, hallelujah, that you do not have to protect your children. Trust in God doesn't mean that you do not have to protect your family and the elderly and the most vulnerable among us. Amen. We have a duty to them. Hallelujah. God calls us, especially we as men, hallelujah, to, to God has called us to, to, to govern and to guide and to guard them. Hallelujah. We have an obligation, but also by extension, other members of the family have an obligation to others in the family. Amen. And to those other, to other people as well. Now, oftentimes, during times of crisis, people fall into two extremes. Panic and fear on one side. And a complete ignorance and indifference on the other side. Yes. Amen. Yeah. In Trinidad and Tobago, we have gotten used to comfort and ease. Amen. We are used to quick answers. Everything is instant. Amen. We are used to quick analyses of Amen. And answers must be quick, prompt, forthcoming. Hallelujah. And things like that. Hallelujah. Amen. So that when we find ourselves in a situation where things are out of our control, Amen. We find that we are faced with a daunting task. It becomes formidable. It becomes something that we are not used to. Hallelujah. And we can be easily um, stumbled. We can easily fall. We can easily step into a panic mode. We can easily begin to get discouraged. Amen. And throw our hands in the air and even to fret. Hallelujah to, to the Lamb. I am saying that during a time like this, amen, in this country, it is easy to understand what can happen, that the levels of anxiety can rise. Hallelujah. I want to say to you, my dear friend, however, that to those of you who are experiencing, hallelujah, these kinds of behavior, that there is help for you. Where is the help? Well, I tell you, my dear friend, the help is in God. I will 
put my trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. I will trust in the Lord with all of my heart and lean not on my own understanding. In all of my ways I will acknowledge him and he shall direct my paths. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So to those of you, amen, to those of you, hallelujah, who might be experiencing negative, amen, experiences which can lead to depression and even to bad behavior, amen, because, hallelujah, bad is a shot, amen, you cannot hang with your friends, amen, hallelujah, maybe we can see a rise of domestic abuse and violence in the homes, yes, there is a distinct possibility, but your friend would like to encourage you and to implore you, hallelujah, to stop, hallelujah, and look to where your help comes from, hallelujah, the, 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 the psalmist David says in Psalm 21, 121, shall I lift up my eyes to the mountain gods? He said, no, I will lift up my eyes unto the Lord from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not suffer our foot to be moved. He that made us will keep us. Hallelujah to the Lamb. All of our help comes from the Lord. Amen and amen. So I'd like to say to you if you're experiencing any kind of depression that is leading into a panic mode pause for a moment think about it there is one brother there is one hallelujah amen that can give you peace and assurance if you will allow him to his name is Jesus, your Savior, your friend, hallelujah, the one that loves you with all that he, he can love, that he demonstrated it, he exhibited it on the cross 2,000 years ago, and even before that, when he came out of the Godhead of the Father and entered into a flesh and a body that was prepared for him, amen, and 23 years after that, hallelujah, exhibited a love, hallelujah, that was greater, amen, by no other man but him, amen, that the Bible said that God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, that Christ Jesus had already died on the cross for sin. So it doesn't matter, hallelujah, who you are and what you have done, amen, my dear friend, he has already died for you, glory be to God, because he loves you, and amen, the, the golden text, John 3 and 16, tell us that God so loved the world, amen, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life, you don't have to perish, you can have life, you can have life, amen. 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 Hallelujah. As far as far as what believers should be doing and walking on at this moment, let me speak to my brothers and my sisters and believers in general. So what do we do in a time like this? What should we be walking on? Well, there are many constructive things. But time will permit me to say just one of them. What should we be working on at this moment? I would like to say to you, like the scripture encourages us, to be sober-minded. Yes. Be sober-minded. Yes. Be sober-minded yes. about it. Yes. Amen. Do not be casual or dismissive yes. about it. Yes. Hallelujah. Make sure that at all times that your life and your relationship with God and 
with your family is strong. It is robust. It will test it and it will stand the test of time. I'd like to tell you, my dear friend, in the end of it all, that is what will matter. That is what will matter. This will come and go over. Come and go. Many other bad experiences will come and go. But the strength of your relationship with your family is important. And beyond that, the strength of your relationship with your maker, oh, your creator, yes. God Almighty, is what will stand. Right. The scripture tells us, uh, I read to you again, uh, but the end of all things is at hand. Yeah. Are we seeing the end of all things? The Bible tells us that all that can be shaken will be shaken. Yeah. Kingdoms are shaken, nations are shaken, governments are shaken, peoples are shaken. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. hallelujah. But the end of all things is at hand. God encourages us through Peter in 1 Peter 4 and 7. He says, be ye therefore people outside of this church. And men and women far and wide that are viewing us on this live stream. And the few of us that is permitted to be here, I lift us up all to you in Jesus' name. And I am praying that God Almighty, that we will submit the best we know how to. If you ever wanted our attention, you have got it now. But we do not want to be rebellious. We do not want to fly in your face. We do not want to ask the question, why? We just want to submit. We want to say all to Jesus, I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his service daily. Live. I surrender. I surrender all. I surrender my thinking. I pray this for myself and for the viewers and listeners. Hallelujah. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his service live daily live I surrender all I surrender all I surrender my body my soul my spirit my mind Lord Jesus amen I repent this morning hallelujah for myself and on behalf of the of many others of all the others we repent and in the name of Jesus, we ask you to have mercy upon us according unto your loving kindness and according unto your multitude of tender goodness, blood of all transgressions, Lord Jesus, and we make you Lord afresh in our lives. We open up our hearts by faith and say, Lord Jesus, come into our hearts. Come in today. Come in and stay. Come in, Lord Jesus. Take up your rightful. Our hearts belong to you. And Lord, we, de we de decide that today and onward, we're going to live for you. Hallelujah. For the rest of our lives. Help us, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Now I want to pray for some of our brothers and sisters who have, who have said to me during the week that you are not well. I'm going to pray for you and by extension the others. Father, you know those who have indicated that they are not.
Elders sit some oh God are uh, 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 suffering with uh, uh, a runny kind of uh, 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 a nasal kind of situation uh, and the others with more serious conditions. Uh, hallelujah to the Lamb. I pray for them in a specific way. I believe in the power of the healing Christ. I believe. I join my faith with, their, with theirs. You have said, oh God, uh, hallelujah, that you are the healer, that you were wounded for transgressions, you were bruised for iniquities, the chastisement of a peace was laid upon you and by the strength that you received, we are healed, and I declare healing in the name of Jesus. Not just declaring it like if I have the power, but I'm in agreement with them. For you say, when you two agree, I touch in one thing. I I agree with my brother. I agree with my sister. I agree with my friend, my neighbor. I agree. Hallelujah! In prayer for that healing to come over her life, over his life, over that home, over that situation. Bring health, bring strength, bring restoration in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I want to pray for us all. as we go through the week, Father, from this week, we know, Lord, you know what we will encounter. You know what we will face. I pray, Father, that you will give us a peace that surpasses all human understanding. Hallelujah to the Lamb. That, oh God, even and when times, hallelujah, of difficulties and loneliness step in, we will run to the rock that is higher than I, and we will remember that we are never alone, that even though the world's fierce winds are blowing and temptations are sharp and keen, that we will feel the peace of God in knowing that the Savior stands between, that Jesus you are standing to shield us from danger when old worldly friends are gone because you promise never to leave us, never to leave us alone. And after all, you are a friend that sticks closer than our brother. So Lord, stick with us and we're going to stick with you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We ask all these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So thank you, my dear brothers and sisters, friends, all. This is your friend. This is your brother, Faith Nukai, pastor of the Aruka Worship Center. Thank you for staying with us. Amen. And we encourage you this afternoon at 6 o'clock. We are coming back on with prayer. Join us and throughout the week, yes. right here on our uh, Facebook page, AWC Church, local for words of encouragement. And throughout the week, we will have services every day daily services in other words except saturday we will be back again i will be back again um tomorrow but i want to let you know that i will be with you again as your friend as your brother and as a pastor next sunday morning god bless you richly and for brothers and sisters who are on the zoom we want to actually stay on. We just have a, a short interactive um, time with you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.